Hello, my name is Bonfi for Gisir Nelia and today I will be talking about the paper I wrote on analysis and the collaboration or co-authorship network among network science researchers using centrality measures. I know the title is really a lot, so I will be breaking each of the elements for you so that we would go through the research really smoothly. So let's start with the first one, collaboration and co-authorship network. So what is it? Collaboration or co-authorship network is a social network of researchers whose focus is on one area or one field. Thus, when an author I publishes a paper with author J, a collaboration is being made. So let's look at one example. For example, the paper written by Stephen Bergatti and Martin G. Everett. They wrote a graph theoretic perspective on centrality. Here, Stephen P. Bergatti will be one particular node or vertex and then Martin G. Everett will be one particular node or vertex as well. Then since they've written one paper, then there is one edge or one connection between the two of them. For example, if there will be nine authors who wrote one paper, then it will produce a connected graph because each one of them is connected with each other, which is an example here on our screen. Now, let's go to network science researchers. Network science researchers collaboration or co-authorship network is a network of researchers interested in network science. It is prepared and compiled by Mark Newman in 2006, and it was based on two literature reviews written by Mark Newman in 2003 and Stephanie Bucaletti in 2006. So these two literature reviews sum up to around 900 plus papers and Mark Newman prepared and compiled all of the authors and all of the papers and then made one data set which is now currently the Network Science Researchers Collaboration or Co-Authorship Network. And then lastly, we have the centrality measures. We have the three very common or the classical uh, centrality measures, which are the degree, centrality, between a centrality, and closeness centrality. We will be explaining, I will be explaining each one of them as we go on with our discussion later. So what is the objective of this paper? The objective is to provide a panoramic view of collaboration of network science researchers at an international level. So we want to understand at an international level the panoramic view of the collaboration of this particular network. So what are the specific objectives? First, it's to analyze how this collaboration network is structured according to centrality measures. Then we want to identify the groups of influential authors and how they are connected and which institutions they actually belong. And then lastly, we want to rank the author's connectedness and influence and to analyze the network's structural whole. Again, we will see each one of them later as we go on with our discussion. So the materials and methodology, there are four steps that I followed in order to go through with this research. First, it's data collection and preparation. So what did I do? I got the data set actually from networkrepository.com. It is a website where there are a lot of network data that, that is free or open source that everybody can use. And I got it from there under the category collaboration networks. Again, as I have mentioned earlier, this particular uh, data was prepared and compiled by Mark Newman in 2006 based on two literature reviews by Mark Newman and Stefano Bocaletti. The software tools I used are two, base, uh, two major Python packages one is iGraph, which is what we learned in class, and the other one is Network X. I use Network X because I believe it has better plotting capabilities and it, ha it shows and it has actually more uh, functionalities that I believe iGraph doesn't have or may be difficult to get. So I use Network X instead. And of course, I back it up with some common uh, Python packages, which are NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas as well. The third step is called data pre-processing. So what I did with data pre-processing is I wanted to look at, on a macro level, how the data or how the network actually looks like in order for us to infer some particular move or some particular analysis that we need to do in our data. 
So I plotted out the entire network and this is how it actually looks like. It's really very scattered with one big network or with one big cluster in the center. And yeah, that's how it looks like. So let's look at some summary statistics for this particular network. It has 15, uh, 1589 vertices. It has 2742 edges. Therefore, it has 1589 authors involved in this particular network. And actually, the two most important thing for me in this summary st statistic is actually the density, which is how connected the network is versus how connected it might be. Obviously, our density here is really very low. It's 0 0.00217 because as you can see here, most of our nodes are actually away from each other or they are not connected with each other. And there is only one very big, um, one very big cluster or one very big component in the center which makes it at some point connected but all the others actually has a lot of clusters and then another one is called the network diameter or the shortest distance between the two most distant node so obviously the two most distant node might or is possibly these two over here and the shortest path in order for one for that particular node up there to reach the node below is 17 steps. So that's the shortest path already. So what do we need to do here? As I have read in most of uh, literature review, we cannot do anything with this data actually. We cannot do a lot of uh, analysis on this data, but I went ahead to check and to gather the centrality measures of this particular network data. Here, obviously, it's really very difficult to infer or to uh, give conclusions because of how scattered our data is and they are not connected. And obviously, if you're going to look at uh, the graph below, this is for clo uh, closeness, uh, it just doesn't make sense at some point. It, it doesn't give out a lot of really good information. So what I did was I read a lot of papers again, and then I wanted to understand how we deal with this kind of thing. What we have to do, uh, according to most of the papers, is to divide uh, the entire network in different components. And I, I have done that, and there are actually 396 components of the entire network. The largest one being the one in the center, with 379 vertices and 914 edges. What we have to do is to study the largest component and infer that most likely it will be representative of the entire uh, network or the entire, yeah, the entire network of researchers that we have over here. So this is how our largest component looks like. Next step is to apply the centrality measures on our largest component. So let's go through each one of them. First is degree centrality. Degree centrality is or computes or measures the number of collaborations an author has. So we wanted to, uh, it provides us with how many collaboration a particular author did or has with other authors, and it measures the capacity to communicate with others. Uh, a higher degree or more connections means that that particular node or that particular author is more central and it tends to have greater capacity to influence others. But nonetheless, authors with high degree co-authored many authors in a single paper rather than co-authored in many papers. So there is one particular good example later that I will show you how this actually looks like or the, how this actually makes sense. So I computed in our largest network, which among all of the authors have high degree centrality. Then it gives it gave out uh, the three particular authors, which had which ranked for uh, one, two, and three. And the top one is actually Barabasi A with 3.71% or 34 degrees among the 396 degrees that we have. And then we have all the other authors as well. So I wanted to understand how they, these particular 10 authors look like in the, in the entire graph or the, in the entire uh, network. So I went ahead to, do, uh, to plot the entire uh, network again. And then in the blue, the blue nodes are the rank one to three and the yellow no nodes 
are the, are the rank 4 to 10. So obviously, they have really a lot of connections, as you can see, and most of them are actually, most if not all of them are actually really central or they are in the center of the map, literally. Then our second centrality measure is betweenness. Betweenness measures the frequency with which the node appears in the shortest path or in a geodesic. So if you want to get the shortest path from one node to another node, then uh, how many times or what is the frequency that a particular node appears in all of the shortest path? So a vertex with a higher betweenness are connectors or bridgers or bridges who bring others together and connecting different groups. This particular author or the author or the vertex with high betweenness has the ability to control the flow of knowledge between most others. So I computed the betweenness centrality or the betweenness measure for each of the nodes again. And our top uh, author or the top ranking author here is actually Newman now. And we have Pastor, Pastor Satoras rank number two, and then Moreno on rank number three. Now, let's look at how these authors actually are plotted in our graph. So here they are. The rank one to three are still in blue, and the rank four to ten are the ones in yellow. Obviously, as you can see here, the rank one to three are really in between or are really in the center of the graph. So therefore, mo all of uh, if you're going to pass or if you're going to go from one node to another node, most likely that rank one to three nodes will be passed by as a shorter distance. And then lastly, we have the closeness centrality. The closeness centrality measures independence. It measures the capacity to reach other authors directly without relying on intermediaries. So it means that what we want here or what the closeness centrality uh, achieves is how long it will take information to spread from a given vortex to others in the network. How close is a certain vortex or vertex to another vertex, sorry. And then uh, high, clo high closeness rates the author as most responsible for spreading information frequently to other researchers. So I computed again the closeness centrality for all of the authors and we found out that Newman, again, is our top ranking author here, followed by Sole and then Pastor Satoras again. And I plotted them again in our graph and that's how they look like, rank 1 to 3 in blue and rank 4 to 10 uh, in yellow. Here, let's look at the top ranking authors, which actually rank uh, top in the three uh, different categories of centrality measures. So first, let's look at the authors which rank in the three different categories. We have here Jiong, H, we have Newman, Mark Newman, and then we have Soli R. As I've researched uh, in most of, uh, as I've researched online, I looked at their data and I looked at their websites. These three um, researchers are actually uh, at the top of the field, all of them, all of them are actually uh, either uh, head of their local community or director of their own research laboratory. So it actually makes sense that they have uh, lots of connections and they are very close and they are in between to connect with one cluster or with one group of researchers to another. Then we have the researchers which found themselves twice in the three categories. Here we have Pastor Satoras, we have Bocaletti. Uh, as you can see, we have Bocaletti and Newman in top uh, in three and two, which are the ones who actually compiled and prepared our uh, data set. And then we have Holm, and then we have Caldavelli, and then we have Bianconi. And then lastly are the ones who are just one time in each other category. One of the very obscure or one of the weird uh, result here is actually uh, the top one or the top ranking author in degree, which is Barabasi A. Let's look at Barabasi A's uh, graph, uh, ego graph basically, but in the entire network. So here, Barabasi is actually over there in the blue, the, the blue node, that's Barabasi. 
And you can see that from the result, Barbara Bassi has high degree, he has low betweenness and low closeness, actually. And what is the reason for that? Most probably the reason for that is Barabasi A is embedded in cluster far from the rest of the network, which is obviously here. We can look at that in our graph. And it's very obvious that he is embedded in a cluster, but is basically far from the entire network. And his connections are redundant. What does that mean? It means that the connections that Barabasi has, as you can see closely, they are actually redundant or without him, they can actually just have, can transfer information between each other. So that's the reason why uh, Barbara Bassi A has high degree, but he has low betweenness and no, low closeness. Here I graphed uh, all of the authors all together. In, yellow, uh, in orange, we have the, the three authors which are uh, which found themselves at the top of uh, the different uh, categories of centrality or they found themselves uh, in the three categories of the centrality and then at blue we have uh, the authors which found themselves twice in the three categories and the green one time so as you can see most or if not all of them are actually really in the center or in the middle of our entire graph I also uh, graphed uh, their frequency uh, according to the degree centrality, closeness, centrality, and betweenness, and found out that uh, the degree centrality follows the power law distribution and also the betweenness centrality, but, uh, but the closeness centrality follows the normal distribution. And then now we come to our final uh, analysis, which is on structural holes. Structural hole is a gap between two nodes who have complementary sources. This is according to Bert uh, in 2004, according to his book, Structural Holes and Good Ideas. Okay, so let's look at an example here. This is uh, the ego graph of Jiang H, which is one of our top ranking authors. An ego graph means uh, we only plot the subgraph among the entire network uh, of a particular vertex or, of a, or a particular node and its uh, connections or its uh, edges. So here, the very central uh, node or the ego graph is for Jiang H. Jiang is, has three, is connecting or is the broker or the bridge of three different clusters. These clusters are called outer. Okay, so imagine if Jiong will be removed in this cluster or in this ego graph. Imagine if the in, in the entire graph, Jiong will be removed. It would mean that uh, there will be three different clusters instead of only one because they are connected by Jiong. So if we remove Jiang, there will be three different clusters now and not just one. And it will basically break down the entire uh, network. So how do we compute for structural holes? Or how do we know if a particular vertex uh, is actually relevant in the entire network? If a vertex is a bridge or is if a vertex is actually a connector? Uh, Bert, in his book, uh, gave us two different computation for it. First, uh, effective size computation. We compute that by the ego's number of alters minus the average degree each alter has to other alters. Then we have Bert's constraint computation, which is a summary measure of the extent to which network alters are connected with each other. So let's look at each one of them. First, on the effective size computation. If a particular node has higher value, it means that it is critical to be removed. If we're going to remove that particular author, then it will break down the entire network. So here, our top uh, author or the most critical author to be removed would be Barabasi. So if we remove Barabasi from the network, uh, it will basically fall down or it will break down. Then of course, we have all our other uh, frontliners or the front runners or the top ranking authors. We have Newman, we have Jiong, we have Bocaletti again, 
and the rest of them, which are actually still on the top 10 of our degree centrality, uh, our closeness, and our between and centrality as well. Then we have the constraint computation. If a particular vertex has lower value, it means that it is more critical if you remove them. So here, our top is Newman, which is the second in our um, the other computation. And then we have Barabasi again, and the rest of them are still uh, in our other computation on effective size. So what happens to our network if we actually remove all of these others? This will be the result of it. Without the bridge nodes or without all of the critical authors, then uh, the entire largest component of our network would be would fall down into like this. It will have a lot of clusters and the network diameter will only be 15 from 17 before. Then the density will be lower to 0 0.0103 from 0 0.01217 because some of the other nodes won't be reached or it won't be reached from a particular node. So the density, it's not that dense anymore. And then lastly, the maximum degree of this network now will only be 11 degrees from 34 degrees before. So it is very critical to understand which of these authors actually uh, influence, actually connect the entire network altogether. So now this is the entire uh, all together. Here, what we wanted to show you is where which particular uh, here I wanted to show you the affiliations or the uh, institutions that these particular authors are actually affiliated with. If we're going to look at each one of them, it would be very impossible to understand or it will be very impossible to uh, infer some uh, conclusions because each one of them actually are from different university. I, I checked it basically, but each one of them are from different universities. But I found out that even though they are from different universities, they are actually the head or the director of their particular department or their particular particular uh, research centers. So here, what I wanted to do is I, dis I decided to make it by region. So this is the graph for the most collaborative authors uh, in a particular region. So uh, amazingly, uh, the biggest region or the, the biggest conglomerate is actually from Italy with five uh, authors, followed by USA, where Newman is and Barabasi is. Barabasi and Newman are the top ranking authors for betweenness and then for uh, closeness and also for uh, degree. And then followed by Spain and Europe, which also has four, where Pastor Satoras and Soli are and then also uh, La Tora. And then the, th the two which are actually on the outlier part are Jiong from Korea and Japan from home. Even though they are actually alone in their area or in their region, these two are actually very well connected in the Western uh, researchers because they are the head of their own research centers and they have a lot of collaborations with them as well. In conclusion, uh, in order for me to cite some conclusion, I wanted to go back to our objectives. Spe uh, let's start with the specifics. First, we are able to analyze how the collaboration network of the network science researchers is structured according to centrality measures. Then we were able to identify the groups of influential authors. Uh, mainly the biggest group was from Italy and then from the USA, Europe, and then from Spain. And then we have two from uh, Korea and then Japan, and then which institutions they belong as well. And then lastly, we were able to rank the author's connectedness and influences. This is through centrality measures as well. And also for, and lastly, for our uh, structural whole, we were able to identify which authors are actually the ones connecting all the other clusters from each other or among each other. Thus, finally, 
In conclusion, we were able to provide a panoramic view of collaboration of network science researchers at an international level. And it is really important not just to see it at a macro level, but also to understand the micro level, which we did, especially with Barabasi over there, where we looked at the individual nodes practically because we wanted to understand how this particular node or a particular vertex affects the entire network. So we want to see the max level or the maximum level or the macro level. And then we also want to identify or to an analyze the micro level of a particular network. And it is very important, especially for social networks like this one. So maraming salamat. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope you enjoyed and you understood everything. Have a great day.